We all love our Souls games. Whether it's a Souls like, Souls Light, Souls Born, Souls. You get the point. But if you've lived under the rock, a Souls game is, according to Wikipedia, a subgenre of action role playing games known for high levels of difficulty and an emphasis on environmental storytelling, typically in a dark fantasy setting. This means there isn't a traditional story centered game. It's typically action after action where you die over and over and over and over and over, learning more and more and getting further each run. These games aren't usually called by the specific types of Souls games, they're usually called roguelikes. Pokemon isn't new to the roguelikes, having Pokemon Emerald Rogue come out a couple months ago. But now, a new Pokemon roguelike is sweeping through the desperate Pokemon lands, and it's Poke Rogue, which was started in March of 2023, but now has made a massive splash in the Pokemon community. Personally, I became aware of it through community posts made by Alfred, but the last 3-4 weeks content has been popping up about it all over. I've played a few roguelike games before, having beat Pokemon Emerald Rogue twice now, but no game has been quite like this one. First of all, Poke Rogue is browser based, meaning it can be played on almost any platform with a browser and an internet connection. Second, it's simple. The game is very easy to understand on your first playthrough. You start the game with your only available Pokemon being the stars from all 9 generations. Each of these stars have a point value of 3, and you can bring a total of 10 points into the game with you. At first, I didn't realize the game had every single Pokemon in it, so I used the three Kanto stars for my first run. I got into the game and I didn't really know any strategies. That is really one of the beauties of roguelikes. You don't know how to play it. You play through your first runs not really knowing how to play the full game. You make it to maybe floor 10 to 15 for losing. It's frustrating to lose, but you learn something from that run. Like how you shouldn't have fixed Cyndaquil because it didn't know Ember off the bat. So you go back in picking Charmander instead. It's those little improvements that give the game its addictive nature. This, the, the way the game flows is simple. In the regular modes, you pick your Pokemon and start on floor 1. You are faced with a wild level 2 Pokemon and you usually kill it. After that, you are faced with the choice of 3 free items and a couple of paid items you can buy. You start with a thousand Poke and you can buy whatever you want. Let's say your item choices are 5 Pokeballs, a Potion, and an Enigma Berry. Well, you killed that Caterpie with your Charmander in one shot. So you pick the Pokeballs and move on. You go through the first few floors before fighting your rival, where you realize you only use Charmander. Sure, Charmander's level 9, but that Piplup you're fighting is level 7. What do you do? I mean, you have Bulbasaur, but it's only level 5, so you lose. So, then next run, you level up both Charmander and Bulbasaur, and you go into the fight with both of them at level 8. You beat the fight, but you only have a half HP level 5 Squirtle left for the next two floors until you get healed. So you lose. You learn from these losses that you need to level up more than one Pokemon, but attempt to level up too many Pokemon, and they all end up too weak to take on the upcoming fights. Poker Rogue isn't a game you can brute force through. It's a slog. You climb from floor to floor, run to run, Pokemon to Pokemon, changing your team each time, learning new strategies, catching new Pokemon over and over. You beat your PB, you get to fourth 62 this time, but lose to a strong low punny. So, go again. This game isn't just a Pokemon game, it's a game of determination, it's a game of wits, quick thinking, strategy building, sacrifice, 90% of gamblers quit before they big win, this is your big win, you can't keep everyone alive, you can't have favorites, it's a slow grind, you work and work until you win, and after you beat those 200 floors, what do you do now? You go again. New Pokemon, new teams, you beat the gym leaders, you catch those Pokemon, you go again. Sorry for the unhinged monologue that would rival even Alpha Rad. But Poker Rogue is an experience, and I completely recommend you try it. But beware, because there are fake websites out there pretending to be Poker Rogue and waiting for you to click on them so they can steal your data. That's why you need NordVPN. NordVPN is the best virtual private network there is. With their service, I can hop anywhere in the world, watching any geo-restricted content I want, and know nothing I'm doing on the internet can be seen by anyone. Use my links in the description for 71% off your order plus 3 months extra. It's a better deal than buying potions in the early game, so make the smarter, safer play and pick up NordVPN subscription with my link below. Getting back into it, Poker Rogue is truly a revolutionary game. It uses the Pokemon premise and adds a beautiful twist. It feels like home with a good amount of new, exciting energy. It's a super hard game and I love it dearly. As of writing this script, March 6th, my PB is for 123 and counting, since my run is still going strong. Thank you for watching this video. I took a poll and, as of writing, only 25% of the people who filled out the form have played it. 
So I urge you, play it. It will change your life.